All right, Jeff Zimmerman with fightnews.com one, with one of the contenders, super welterweight contenders, Erickson the Hammer Lubin. How you doing, Erickson? I'm doing great. So Erickson, you got a you got a big fight coming up uh, Saturday night against Jason Rosario on the Tank Davis uh, Barrios uh, undercard. How excited are you? I'm I'm super excited, man. You know, it's a it's a it's a big card, stacked card. And you know, I'm just I'm I'm happy to be here and I'm ready to take full advantage of it. So, man, I you were coming up, you were one of the hottest young guys in in all of boxing. <laughs> You had the knockout power, 21 years old, golden gloves and everything. You skipped out on the Olympics to turn pro. And then you had the big fight with Jamel Charlo in 2017 and, and you got stopped. Was, was, it, was it too soon for you or, you know, too much too soon? I guess. I guess. Um, I feel like it was a big fight. You know, I was there to be great early you know, at a, at a young age, you know, I just had turned 22 years old, so, you know, days before the fight. Um, it's just, I, I, I made a mistake and I went in there, um, went in there and made a mistake. And he, he, he caught me, caught me with that, mis- um, with me making a mistake and, you know, he took advantage of it, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about that. I'm here. I'm back. I'm five, I'm on a five fight one streak. Ready to take advantage on Saturday to go on a six fight win streak, and then you know they're gonna be talking about me and Jamel part two. If he right. takes care of Brian Castaño. Yeah, we're gonna. We're, I'm gonna ask you about that, but let me let, let me ask you though. After that, because you were a young young guy in the game, you had a lot of people, you know, praising you and everything. What impact did that did that loss have on you? Just being such a young fighter. It just motivated me, man. It motivated me to. Uh, take boxing way more serious, you know, because coming up, you know, I just, I just thought things were just, you know, a lot, it was sweet. Like, you know, I was able to go in the uh, short camps and, you know, just stuff like that. You know, I felt like I, I didn't, I didn't really prepare myself for a, a big world title fight like that. And I, I don't blame any of my trainers, you know, but it was just me. It was more so me. That's why I moved from my hometown and I, I, I just, you know, I regrouped, regrouped, went back to the drawing boards, and I feel like I'm better than ever now. Yeah, and let me ask you, because it, it seems to me, you know, as someone who covers boxing, the 154-pound division is slept on. It seems like there's a lot of guys. It might be one of the deepest divisions in boxing. Maybe there's not a, a superstar at the top, you know, you know, for the fans or the media, but do you feel like the 154 is pretty stacked? Yeah, it's pretty stacked. I think it's real stacked. You know, a lot of these guys are getting the titles and they're giving them right up, you know, the very next fight, you know, um, you know, but right now, you know, all, all four titles are going to be in one person's hands real soon when it comes to Jam- uh, Jamel Charlo and, and Brian Castaño. So I'm looking forward to that fight and, you know, hopefully I can get the winner. And and how do you see that fight playing out? Obviously, Jamel's the unified champ. He, you know, he's had the belts for, for a while now. And Castaño, you know, is a tough, you know, come forward type of guy. How do you see that fight going? It's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to be a good fight. Um, I, I, for some reason, I think Jamel beats him, though. I think he's the bigger guy and, you know, he's more athletic. So I think he'll beat him. Now, the other guy that Jermel beat to, to unify the title um, is a guy you're fighting this weekend, Jason Rosario. Um, d- what were your thoughts on that fight and the way Jermel ended it with the body punch after dropping him? But early on, it looked like Rosario, you know, was taking it to him. Um, yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think it was a weird body shot, you know, just a jab to the, uh, to the stomach. But um, it's boxing. It's boxing at the end of the day. Maybe Rosario had, you know, what issues making weight or something because the way he went out was just, you know, a little bit odd. But um, you know, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. That's I want the best Rosario. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting the best Rosario that won the titles that took it from Julian Williams. So my mind is on, you know, just going out there and being my sharpest and my best. 
And, and what do you what do you expect from Rosario on Saturday night? I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't give a damn. I, I I expect him to come out there and just you know be. I, I expect him to be his best. Like I said before, I expect him to be his best, and I'm I'm gonna go out there and be my best. And I don't think nobody could beat me when I'm at my best. And and you, and you mentioned getting another crack at Charlo. Um, I would imagine that is your ultimate goal. No, nah, my ultimate goal is to take over boxing. I want to take over boxing. That's my ultimate goal, you know. And and fights like that will come, and, and I, I do hope so that it's next. You know, after I take care of business on Saturday, and he takes care of business against Castaño if he does. But you know, um, I feel like I feel like, you know, me taking over boxing is that's that's just the start of it. You know, that's my ultimate goal. So let me let me ask you, Erickson, and this is Jeff Zimmerman, FightNews.com, with uh, super welterweight c- title contender Erickson Lubin. Um, you're talking about taking over boxing, and and the one thing you have on your record, you know, with with that loss, and it seems like in boxing, and call it the Floyd Mayweather effect or what, that one loss seems to define a lot of fighters, or they're afraid to get in the ring. And, and you mentioned that doesn't you know, define me. That doesn't define me. A loss doesn't define me. You know, it was more like a lesson. I learned from it. I'm on a five-fight win streak. Like I said, on Saturday, I'm going to make it six. Not worried about that loss. I took that loss at an early age. I regrouped. I moved out of my hometown. I got with Kevin Cunningham, great trainer. He's great with southpaws. He taught me the game. He's he's teaching me the game still. I'm getting better. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting faster. So I'm not really worried about that loss. You, a lot of guys that was taking over boxing, they had blemishes on their records. You know, um... I feel like, you know, nowadays Floyd just did it different. He made the most money because he he was flashy and he he did things his way. He made great he made great investments and you know, he was barely touched. So he was able to do just do things outside of boxing and in the ring. So um like I said, I'm 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 looking to take over boxing. Canelo has a has a blemish on his record right now and he's the face of boxing right now. Right, right. That's a good point. And do you feel like uh, fighters are trying to keep that O on their record. They're trying to protect of course, their record. No, no one wants to lose. Nobody wants to lose. Nobody wants to lose. I, I definitely didn't want to lose. It's not like I, I was like, oh yeah, let me let me take a loss and see if I learn from it. Nah, it's like, you know, it happens in boxing. This is boxing. It's a it's a brutal sport. It's a combat sport. So sometimes you know, um, when you move too fast and you 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 take steps too fast, you know, sometimes things like that can happen. I learned from it. I'm back. I'm better. And just Saturday night, tune in. And 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 just on your last point, though, you dared to be great at a young age, as you stated earlier. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, I came in the game and I, I wanted to be a world champion by the time, you know, the, the next Olympics had came around. You know, I was I was I was a little late, but um, um, you know, I still got that shot. I learned from it. Um and, you know, I, I'm better now, better now than ever. Let, let me ask you about a fight that's around your weight, and, and, and we'll wrap it up here in a second. Um, you, get, you got Errol Spence, 147, unified champ, and, and Terrence Crawford, um, you know, also a world champ at 147. If they ever get in the ring, and obviously Spence is a southpaw like you, how do you see that fight playing out? Fireworks. Fireworks. That's a, that's a great fight. You know, that's one of the, the, the biggest fights to make in boxing today. And I just think it'll be fireworks. All right. Well, you heard it here. Erickson Lubin's got a big fight this Saturday night, June 26, against Jason Rosario. And uh, both guys trying to get back in the title hunt under the Tank Davis uh, Barrios card in Atlanta uh, pay-per-view. Um, any last words, you want, shout outs to your fans, anything else you, you want to say, Erickson? Shout out to the Hammer Time supporters that's been supporting me since the beginning. Um, just tune in on Saturday, Hammer Time on Showtime at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta. There will be fireworks. All right. You heard it here, Erickson Lubin. I appreciate the time and uh, good luck Saturday and hope to talk to you down the road. Thank you. Thanks for Thank having you. me.